Okay, hi guys. Uh, welcome back to a, another episode of Cooking with Taylor. Um, this is going to be a fairly short episode. Uh, things did not run the way that they should have run today, so you're not going to see a whole lot of stuff being done because I've already done it, unfortunately. But um, it's very easy. Um, what I will get a lot of recording of, we're going to have two today, but they're going to be two separate videos. So the one I'm going to do now, which I've already done, is this one over here. This is beef in Guinness stew. It is an Irish recipe. Excuse me. The onions are killing me. Just a little bit. <laughs> I don't do well with onions. It's a very simple recipe. You're going to need beef shank or beef chuck, um, shin. Well, shank and shin is the same thing. Um, basically anything that is a very lean beef. You don't want to do, um, like a pot roast kind of thing. You, you, you don't want something with a lot of fat on it. You want it to be very, very, very lean. Um, and pardon my outfit for today. I... I'm going to an event. It is a Victorian era picnic. I don't have my jacket on. I just have my corset on. Um, so it's very, very simple. So you take the beef and what you're going to do is you're going to sit and cut it up into chunks. Um, I'm going to show you because you'll be able to see them in here, but you're going to cut them into chunks. Um, you're going to need about four carrots. The recipe calls for six. I leave it up to you. If you don't want a lot of carrots or you want a lot of carrots, I'm leaving that up to you. Um, you are going to cut them like this. Now this is the end and I just dropped it, but that is the end, but you're going to be cutting your carrots like this. Okay. I am so sorry for my nose. You guys today is just Murphy's law kind of day. Um, you also need one whole onion. The recipe calls for two, but if you get them really large, I'll show you mine. If you get a big one like this, only use one unless you like a lot of onion but it honestly makes a lot of onion it makes about because if you cut up a whole one you're going to get about a cup and a half worth of onion and i think that's more than enough um you also need parsley parsley gets put on at the end potatoes are optional i add them in you don't have to. The recipe doesn't call for it, but I like having the potatoes in there. I do about two to three potatoes and you are going to cut them up and I don't have a piece of potato. You're going to slice them. You only want the slices to be about this wide. Lay them flat, cut them into fours. If you think those fours are too big, cut those pieces in half and then put them in. Um, let me move you guys over here so you can see. So here we have it. Um, it's boiling right now and let me show you guys. Here's a potato. The onion and carrot, which actually the larger slices of carrots, I will show you guys, I cut them in half like this. Onion, I dice the onion. You want it to be small amounts as possible, but it's also okay if they end up like this. And so what you're going to do okay, so what you're going to do when you've got your beef in chunks. You're going to take a bowl and you're going to fill it with flour. 
and you're going to season it with salt and pepper leaving that up to you how much you want to do i do about a couple pinches of salt but i go pretty heavy with the pepper i would say i probably do about one to two teaspoons or so of pepper um i don't even do up to a teaspoon of the salt um I am making it celiac friendly version today. So normally you would use white flour, but I'm using brown rice flour today so that somebody can actually eat it who's got celiac. When your beef chunks are cut up, you are going to throw them into your bowl, which is now in my sink. You're going to throw them into the bowl with the seasoned flour and you're going to roll them. Make sure it's coated all the way around in that flour. It doesn't have to be thick, but as long as you can see like a white cast around it, it's covered. You're going to take a pan, or you can use the pot that you're using to, to cook it in, and you're going to brown the meat. So browning it isn't necessarily cooking it all the way through. Browning it is just so it's not completely red all the way around on the outside. Think of it like a rare to a medium rare steak. It's brown on the outside, but on the inside is still pink. That's perfectly fine because it's going to be cooking in this for up to two hours. Toss in the flour, brown them, put them aside. You're going to take your diced onion, throw them in with about a little bit of oil. I'd say no more than a tablespoon of oil. Throw your onion into the pound, the pound the pan toss them around until they're about they're translucent if you can almost see through them and they don't really look white anymore they're good leave them in there because then you're going to take your beef chunks and you're going to toss them in and you're going to mix them together and then you're going to take your liquid so our liquid is it is a the recipe says one cup. I do three. Um, I just don't feel like one cup is enough liquid. Um, but if you take that one cup, you're going to do half a cup of water, half a cup of Guinness. So then they mix together and then you pour it in. I do three cups of those. Celiac friendly version because no Guinness is gluten free. What we are doing is that whole cup, half a cup of water, quarter cup of beef broth, quarter cup of A&W, root beer. Um, you can also use Coke, Pepsi, um, Dr. Pepper, any other root beer. I picked A&W because it already has a little bit of a sweetness and a creaminess to it like Guinness has. And you're just going to pour it in. Taste it. I ended up putting about a quarter of a cup extra beef broth in there because I felt it was just a little too sweet from the A&W. But definitely once you get it all in there, take a little sip of the liquid and kind of go from there. If you're doing the water in Guinness, you don't need to do that. Do half a cup of water, half a cup of Guinness, pour it in. And now we can actually turn that down. Let me see if you guys can see it. You see all this fat? Let me see if it'll slide down. You see how much fattier that is? That's what you want. You're going to want that, and that's going to be your little bit of fat. Take four strips, and you're going to cut them into pieces no more than this wide. Because you only want small pieces of it. Cut them up, toss it in there, mix it up really, really well. You're then going to put it on about medium medium high and you're going to let it come to a boil when it starts boiling which is what it was just doing you are then let me turn it you're then going to turn it on low to simmer it and you're going to cover it slightly so let me show you what i did i have it open a little bit so this is it completely closed i just have it up a little bit to let some of that excess steam come out let me set that down and you're going to let that sit when it's on the simmer and you have it covered it's going to sit like that for a minimum of one 
one to one and a half hours, maximum of two. The whole point of that is to finish cooking the onion, cook the carrots, cook the potatoes. The bacon isn't going to take that long to cook, but it's fine. It's the fat is what we want out of it anyways. And it also helps the beef that we just browned soak up that excess liquid and it'll get, um, it'll get juicier. So we leave it like that. We will check it in about an hour, see where it's at. Um, what you're looking for is that the carrots and the potatoes are cooked all the way through. So you're going to want to just kind of take one of those pieces out. If it's soft all the way through, it's done. Turn it off. It's ready to eat. The other thing that we will be making today is potato farls. They are potato pancakes. I still have my potatoes boiling. They should be just about there, but we will come back to this and when it's done, I'll show you what to do because we're also going to add some flour into this when it's done to thicken up the liquid. Ooh, take this opportunity while all that's cooking and before we move on to the falls. Mm, I'm sorry, just drink a soda. Clean up your mess. Get your dishes in your dishwasher, get them washed, get what's left put away. That way when you're done and we get on to the next thing, we don't have stuff everywhere, everything's already cleaned up, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, actually let me move you guys back a little bit. Um, this still has about 30 minutes to go. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off. Move it over. And we're going to add in our flour. And we're just a sprinkling. And we're going to just pour the rest of it in. Um, I'd say it's about a half a cup. Half a cup of flour. And then we're going to want to go ahead and mix that in. And all this is going to do is thicken the liquid so it's more like a stew instead of a soup. And my farls look like they're just about done. Once that's mixed in, put your lid back on and let it go the rest of the way. Okay, so I'm going to show you the finished stew. So it's completely done cooking. It almost took an hour and a half. I was waiting on the potatoes. The potatoes are nice and soft. And here it is in my crock pot. So what I did. Just to aid in the heat, I turned my crock pot on high for about 10 minutes and then put it on warm and left it on warm. So then that way it's already warm when I put this in here, when I put the stew in here. So it's going in here. I'm going to put the lid on it. This is my traveling one. So the lid suctions down. So then that way with liquids and stuff, they don't come out. Um, but that is it, you guys. This is Irish food. Um, I will get these videos edited as quickly as I can. Um, but I will see you guys next time. Bye.